Hello, Duck Hunt, and welcome to the IGN UK podcast. This is IGN podcast number 249. Ollie yeah. frowned when you said Duck Hunt. I don't think he knows what that means. I don't know what that means. What does it mean? Well, I should introduce my team first. Okay, fine. I'm here with Daniel Kruper. Hello. Who you all know, and Ollie Moss. Hello. Who some of you might know, friend of the podcast. Is friend it, of the podcast. Is this the guest? Third time you've been on? I think, I think it is, third, yeah, the third, third time. The third yeah, time. Cemented. But it's not been for a while, has it? No. Well, last time I got a complaint. Did you? I got a complaint. They said my voice was really boring, so I'm trying to be more oh. dramatic. Oh. I'm trying to sort of like. Well, I think your voice is, is lovely. Thank you. Uh, if you don't know Ollie, he's poster designer, artist extraordinaire, and video game developer. Yeah, who's who's segued <laughs> into video games. Mm. Uh, something we're going to talk about a bit later. But Duck Hunt has become the call of the IGN uh, UK podcast listeners, okay. as you'll see from some of the. Um, so, the feedback so, we we have, so we have some listeners who have gone away and set up their own kind of um, community page on Facebook mm. for this podcast and they refer to themselves as Duck Hunters. Okay. And it was this thing that was kind of a throwaway line in podcasts mm. like 20 episodes ago. Alex despises it. He, he, <laughs> he, he, he wasn't here when it happened. Despises the, the notion of a catchphrase. And it was me and that then, said it. He's never gotten over it. Yeah. But... Um, yeah, speaking of the podcast, don't we have a little request to kick off with, Dan? Yeah, oh, now I'm going to have to read this out, right? Okay, so as we said last week, we're up for an award, a, a People's Choice Award, a Gamer's Choice Award at the MCV Awards next week. Ooh. And... Um, <laughs> and Sorry. so you can vote for the IGN UK podcast. We really would appreciate your support. And there's no easy way of saying this URL. Um, so it's www.surveymonkey.com forward slash s forward slash 22957jp because <laughs> we it just trips off the too, tongue we're too cheap to buy a vanity URL but oh, we just do it get one of those get one of the weird um, ones with the dot. we're not too proud to admit this though we do quite yeah, well yeah well Rich is going to put it up on screen we'll put it in the podcast story or you could, if this is easier I don't know if it is it's um, trib.al forward slash lwy5g5c well you're just complicating it by giving out two now I'm giving people options uh, Ollie, have you voted yet? I have not. Have you told your many Twitter followers to vote for us? Well, I don't know what the other options are. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> I, I so voting closes. Remain unbiased and, and fair. <laughs> it's I because think. you're making a game. It's, it's, it's true. I can't show any partiality at all, at all. So voting closes on Wednesday the 15th of October at midday. Mm. And uh, then we'll find out later that day how we've gotten on to so the awards oh. that night. Anyway. Please, fine. please vote if you enjoy the podcast. Please, yeah. please. Anyway, enough of that. Okay. Uh, let's talk about what we've been up to. I have uh, the London Film Festival's kicked off um, with the Imitation Game. Uh, I interviewed Benedict Cumberbatch for that one. Very nice chap. Uh, well, I can't post the interview until November 1st, but we talked about lots of things, which I'm not allowed to talk about yet. Can you talk about the can movie? You, yeah, you, what's this movie Imitation about, Game's Chris? really good. Yeah. Uh, do you know anything about it? No, I don't know. It's about, about Alan Turing. Oh, it's about Turing. It's oh, about yeah. I love who, Turing. Yeah, amazing. Who any any self respecting geek knows about Turing because mm -hmm. he pretty much cre invented the computer, but he also found a way to crack the Enigma code and mm. uh, win in, us in the his war in his spare time and uh, horribly mistreated by our government. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's the story of his life, uh, mainly his childhood and uh, the period of adulthood when he cracked the Enigma code, and then obviously when he was. Um, arrested for homosexuality and, and terrible things were done to him and he ended up commit, committing suicide. But it's actually a really exciting Does the film thriller. take in the full story? Is it focused on Yeah, it's on kind of three boys. different bits. It's, okay. it's a childhood, a, 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 element, a time in his childhood, the enigma time, and then when he got arrested. Later and life. and okay. uh, It's a really great film and he's, he's brilliant in it. Like mm. You could see him getting an Oscar nomination. Mm. Uh, but it's a really important story as well, one that needs to be told because he was only pardoned, I think, recently. two years ago, a yeah, year really ago. Yeah, recently. But like um, Obama in a speech recently called him one of the three greatest scientists of the 20th century. So, yeah, it's a really great movie. But um, so I thought I'd just suggest some other films if people are around okay. and fancy coming to London to watch some movies. Uh, okay. 71 is out this week and my review's already on the site. Uh, that's a really good. It's set during the Troubles in 1971 and it's about a soldier who gets um, abandoned in Belfast on his own and has to try and get back to his barracks. Uh, it's a brilliant thriller, really smart. Our video conversation reviews up on the site. It is. In uh, depth. Fury closes the festival. That's Brad Pitt's tank movie. Uh, I'm not allowed to say if I've seen it or not, but there'll be a review up this weekend. Uh, <laughs> it's all reviews itself, okay. doesn't it? Brad Pitt tank movie. Yeah. I'm told. It's the guy I'm... that did Training Day and End of Watch. He does. He oh, does right. mainly oh, yeah. does stuff that's kind of set in one location with with very sort of testosterone fueled. Tanks. Is it in a tank or is there just yeah tanks yeah? Around? Half of it's in a tank, pretty wow. much. Okay. You'd like the whole thing to be in a tank. I would. I want the whole thing. To, I want it to be this sort of high concept movie about <laughs> Brad Pitt in a tank. I wanted the whole thing to be in a tank. Yeah. 
that's boot. The whole film's in a submarine. Exactly. It's not actually. That's a lie. I don't know. I've never seen it. Um, too long. Or too long. Right. Too long in German. <laughs> I don't know. There's some horror films that are worth watching. It okay. follows is going to be the big horror film of next year. Uh, I still haven't seen it, but everyone I know that's caught it says it's really yeah, frightening. Yeah, I've heard. I've heard this as well. Yeah. Um, so I, I will have a review of that pretty soon. Spring, I've seen, which is kind of like if Richard Linklater made a horror film, that's what it would be. Okay. It's a bit like well, Before Sunrise. Which, which, which Richard Linklater? Though? The, like the School before, of Rock Richard Linklater? The, the Before Sunrise <laughs> Just like trilogy. That. The Before Sunrise right, trilogy. Okay. Um, uh, it's really beautiful, uh, really sweet horror film. If that's such a thing, mm. that's worth that watching. Sort of I think the orphanage is a very sweet horror film. Yeah. the right one in is also mm. a very sweet horror film. Yeah, okay, that's a mm. subgenre yeah. we've yeah. not discussed sweet. before. The sweetest horror movies where uh, kids die. The <laughs> sequel to Monsters is coming out, Monsters Dark Continent. Oh, oh yeah, that's not that's not Gareth. Edwards, no, no is Gareth has produced it, kind of. Who's okay. this guy? Who's uh, that? I think he's called Tom Green, but not that Tom Green. Uh, he did, I think he did uh, Misfits on the TV. He's done lots of really good stuff. Right, has it got monsters in it this time? It has. It's more a war film, this right, one. Okay. If, if the first one was kind of a romance. Um, that's worth a watch. We'll have a review up uh, in the next few days on the site. And the one I really want to see is Foxcatcher. Oh, I've heard amazing things yeah. about this movie. That's the Steve, Steve Carell. Steve Carell, yeah. Steve Carell. It's based on a true Channing story. Tatum. Mm. Yeah. A really grim true story if you if you read up on the true story. Yeah. Although I think it's better not... I no, wish no, I didn't no, yeah. I think we should stay away from the specifics. But yeah, this could be Steve Carell's uh, Oscar movie. Who knows? But yeah, so who knows? He's got a big fake nose in it, though, hasn't he? Oh, that's good. I thought that was a good. I thought that's that was good. a yeah, thing no, you were doing. No, oh, good. Okay, good. I he's meant a, he's a pro. You retroactively he's a meant that. <laughs> <laughs> good. Um, so yeah, that's the the London Film Festival on for sort of I think ten days from when so this goes go live. You, you know, it's open to the public to buy tickets yeah. and all that. Yeah, yeah. Just go on the LFF, Google LFF, and you'll find it all. Um, that's me talking too much. So do you want to do the first? I'll piece do my of bit. News? Okay. Yeah. So. Early in the week, um, James Gunn revealed the, um, the the Chinese title for Guardians of the Galaxy. You've seen Guardians of the Galaxy? I right? have. What do you think of it? I really enjoyed it. It's really yeah. good fun, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So it's Big opening fan. in China finally, and the English translation of the Chinese title is as follows: Interplanetary Unusual Attacking Team. <laughs> <laughs> and this is one of the biggest stories in IGN in the last week. That some people have really latched onto this thing, but this isn't a new thing. Is China like kind of not directly? There is no direct. Trans- translation probably for Guardians mm. of the Galaxy it probably is but it's not it doesn't sound doesn't as good, sound good and yeah. that probably sounds better in Chinese hopefully mm. but what I thought is I would find out some more Chinese titles and see if Actually, either of you can work can out what yeah okay you ready for this okay. Yeah. okay 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 <laughs> should we make this competitive no I, to be honest it should be, the re- it should be, it should well, be collaborative we can both, we can collaborative both, well we can both have a game when it's Alex's yeah. competitive I want to beat him okay um, <laughs> I, so, I, like, I tried some of these on Alex before we started. He found them very difficult, but he's, okay. seen, he's only seen two films. So. Okay, um, Six Naked Pigs. Mm. Oh, God. The Avengers? <laughs> <laughs> is, is, that, is that the final stab? Uh, Reservoir Dogs? <laughs> well, it's not bad. No, okay. it's, it's actually the full Monty. Ah, uh, oh, we could have worked it out. We could see together. We're stronger. <laughs> yeah. I, think we <laughs> we don't, I don't want to spend too much time thinking, though. Okay. okay. His powerful Dead device air. makes him famous. His powerful device makes him famous. Um, Boogie Nights. Correct. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Correct. God, amazing. I was going to go Iron Man. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Correct. Wow. <laughs> Joe uh, Cancer wins the. <laughs> wins that's the day. Not, that's <laughs> all, with all these, Joe Cancer's is definitely the way okay, to go. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Cat Poop. Oh, Mr. God. Cat Poop. Um, uh, oh, this is actually what? very. I've heard this before, but I can't. What's go on? I can tell me. I can't. As good as it gets. Uh, I did know. I, yeah. um, tough. I've worked this one. One night, big belly. One night, big belly. One night, big belly. Um, brr, lost in translation. No, I don't know. What? Uh, Monty Python. Not up. Not up. Oh yeah, that's. Um, fun, not. Funny enough, I did actually uh, when I interviewed Jad Apatow, I tested him. On some of the foreign titles of his movies, exactly like this. Oh, he didn't. He didn't get many right. Um, I'll do a couple more. Okay. Um, this hitman is not as cold as he thought. Leon, <laughs> it's Leon. Yes, <laughs> I'm this, back. This, is, this is one of like, my favourites. Okay. Probably get this. He's a ghost. Ghost. <laughs> Six cents. <laughs> Six cents. Spoiler, <laughs> spoiler alert, viewers. Um, oh, spoiler man. alert. Yeah. Um, all right. Do you close on these two. Okay. Um, similar. But quite different films. Son of the Devil. Omen. Hellboy. Junior. 
Oh. <laughs> and then another one, okay. Satan female soldier. Uh, um, Electra. G.I. Jane. G.I. Jane. So both oh, okay. Satan movies, in a way. I suppose so. <laughs> Junior and G.I. Jane, both Satan. That was a fun game, though. That was both a good game. natural concepts, a man giving birth and a female soldier. Oh, the Yeah. yeah. Unnatural. Well, no, that's why. That's, I, that, that's not what I'm saying. That, that's that's not, not what no, I'm saying. Well, I'll, we'll, we'll clip that out and see. Oh, brilliant <laughs> soundbite. Okay, now equally exciting news from you, Chris. <laughs> equally exciting news. This, I think this is something that all the IGN um, this, listeners from all over the world are. This came answer. as something of a shock yesterday, and it was such a big story. I don't think we've even bothered writing it up for the site, <laughs> but we felt like talking about it on the I podcast. Saw, I saw this on the show uh, itinerary, and I was like, "What?" So yeah, I, well, I, I thought this was April there. Fools yesterday, okay. but in October. What does? And it was written up by Tom Butler, oh, our friend at Yahoo. Um, he says uh, that the British film industry is going to get exactly what it needs. What's that? Which is a Dad's Army movie. Oh, yes. I mean, the world's been waiting for this, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. There was actually a Dad's Army movie back in 71. Oh, we don't care about that. We want a new movie. We want a new, we want a new movie with, with sexy young and stars. And CGI. So, and CGI. So, th- <laughs> so this is an awful... Well, it sounds like a rubbish idea, really. But when you look at the cast list... They've actually nailed it. I think they actually cast it. Yeah. yeah when cast it said cast that army, I thought we were going to go around and cast it ourselves. <laughs> well, but you can do that if you want. No, 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 no. Go on, they, yeah, they've come out with the announcement fully cast. Yeah, and we looked down it and we actually liked everyone. So, uh, Toby Jones as Captain Man Wearing. Mm, good. Are you yeah. aware of Toby yeah, Jones' I know work? Toby Jones. Yeah, there's a picture in there. Toby Jones, uh, Truman Capote, and yep. Hungry yep. And um, Emil, Emil and Zola. In, and in, a man um, who I keep Captain seeing America. on the tube all the time, oh. but in in inopportune moments where I can't go and say hello because I do want to I do want to say hello one day. He's so such, watch this he's space. Such a good actor and seems like a delightful fellow as well. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? Mm, yeah. Charming man. Um, so uh, Sergeant Wilson, played by uh, John Lemessurier in the original. Yeah. Okay. You aware of his work? No. You remember? Okay. okay. That guy. You know uh, that yeah. guy. Yep. Yeah. Bill Nye. Oh, yeah. Bill okay. Nye. Bill Nye. Who doesn't love Bill Nye? He doesn't love him. He's, he's in a British film. So <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> you. And he's a Crystal Palace fan. Uh, Private Pike. Yep. Blake Harrison from The Inbetweeners. Neil. Which one? Neil. Neil. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it could yeah, work. Because yeah, the thing yeah. with Neil, everyone's like, oh, he's typecast. He's got, he's, he's, he can only play that role. Funnily enough, they did that role 40 years ago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's Pike. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so Clive Dunn. Who plays um, Jones? Okay. You may, do you know? Do you know your dad's army? No, I'm getting a sense that he doesn't know what I'm talking about here. He's playing along though. There's, 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 there's a Scottish <laughs> one. There's a Scottish okay. one who says we're doomed a lot. That's right, isn't it? Uh, yeah. 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 Who's, that, who's, the, who's is that? Godfrey. Yeah, I think uh, that's Fraser. Oh, okay, that's coming up soon. Uh, Tom Courtney is playing Jones. Okay. Um, uh, was famous for the loneliness of the long distance runner. Big. Big one for IGN <laughs> readers. Uh, Michael Gambon is Godfrey, the really old sweet guy. Interesting, yeah. Um, Private Walker, the Spiv, who was my favourite character. He's been played by Daniel Mays. Danny Mays is one of the best actors in England. He looks familiar. What have I seen him in? Um, Atonement, Welcome to the Punch, Made in Dagenham. He's in loads of stuff. Okay. Uh, Vera Drake. Uh, Bill Patterson is playing Private Fraser. Um it's not as exciting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Catherine Zeta Jones is going to be in it. That seems fine. Um, <laughs> Alison, just, uh, Alison yeah. Stedman, Mark Gatiss is going to be in it. <laughs> okay. They just hired everyone. All right. Yeah. They only but, they just need David Tennant and Olivia Coleman as well. Then. What I'm it. slightly less excited by is the fact that the man who is uh, directing it is Oliver Parker, who did the Centrinians movies. Mm. Mm. Uh, what's the plot synopsis? I I've don't seen know. It. So I, I, I think there's one German in the town, yeah. and the whole film is like a whodunit. They have to like track him down and find out who the secret German is. I reckon is. they go and take on Hitler by themselves. <laughs> come that's on, the, that's the, they finally hey, got the Toby Jones to ripping it. his shirt off. Yeah. <laughs> come on. That's what, so I'm going. I'm actually, saying Mark Gatiss is the German. Wait, is that yeah, now? Is that only World War Two or World War One? I? I don't even two. two. World War Two. Yeah, it's the home front. Yeah. The show's creators are surprisingly still alive. Um, and they will be given be, cameo roles. Are they? <laughs> they're going to be executive producing it. Okay. Um, and it's scripted by the guy that did uh, Mr. Bean's Holiday and Johnny English Reborn. So, uh, one to look forward <laughs> to. Lovely news. Um, okay. And on that bombshell, uh, I think that's the news, really. It wasn't a lot of news yeah, this week. Nah, it's pretty quiet week. So, let's talk about Ollie Moss. Hello. Hello, Ollie. Hey. 
Uh, so you've been on the podcast a couple of times back in the poster days. Back in the old poster days. Uh, and we <laughs> had some. Is that lo- how you refer to that? Era? That's my poster <laughs> That's period. Pun. Yep. <laughs> And here's an Ollie Moss poster. Yeah, I brought you some stuff. There you go. Look at that. It looks like Spider-Man's face, but really it's a bra and two boobies. Yeah. Bloody clever. A high point. Of my I was going to say, is that the word? If you had to pick out one piece for Chris to hold <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for the retrospective, that's the one that I want on the show. I, 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 <laughs> the yeah. I have an, uh, an Ollie Moss on my wall in my living room. Yes. Uh, the print that's I the bought. the first time we met. The day I met you in Austin, Texas, which is your brilliant American werewolf in London poster. Which people should Google and have a look at because it's so. You, but you didn't understand. No, it you saw his British eyes. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, that. it's really good. We've done oh, that I enough times. <laughs> really yeah. We've said, yeah, we're we talked about that enough times. Oh, yeah. um, so, what have you been up to since you've been on the podcast? I've been making a video game. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's, <laughs> so, so we I, can I, talk we about actually, this video game a bit. Yeah, you put a poster of that in. We actually we announced it a while ago, but. Um, we sort of unveiled the first trailer mm-hmm. at PAX uh, at the beginning of August, and it's a video game called Firewatch, mm-hmm. and it's made by a company that I um, joined called Campo Santo, yeah. which consists of myself, um, Jake Rodkin and Sean Vanneman, who were the creative leads on The Walking Dead Season 1, uh, Nels Anderson, who was the lead gameplay designer and Mark of the Ninja, and a bunch of other people who have made similarly brilliant games. It's quite, quite an For impressive example, like, team then. Yeah, Jane was the lead artist on The Cave at Double Fine, and Chris was also at Double Fine doing music. He did the soundtrack for um, Gone Home and The Cave and a couple of other sort of smaller indie games, and his work is incredible. And, it's, and uh, Will Armstrong, who was the lead uh, player interaction guy on Bioshock 2. Okay, so, so we have a pedigree. So yeah, it's a it's a team of people who are much smarter yeah. and more talented than I am, which is really nice. Well, I know Marty's <laughs> been to um, see it. Yeah, Marty's, and, and Marty Mitch, came around. Yeah, yeah, Marty's a great guy. Yeah, Marty's really nice. He's, he's bought a nice cardigan. Yeah, he's, and he's got he's a great the king beard. Of the cardigans, yeah, yeah, so and nice. I think I want to give him a hug every time I see yeah, him. Yeah, so Mitch, so Mitch saw it at PAX, I believe, as well. Yeah. Um, and an original write-up, um, Bioshock was kind of um, the reference. Yeah, reference quite a lot. Can you talk a bit about that? Yeah, I mean, well, it's a yeah, it's just like nobody knows anything about the game. It's, well, it's hard to it's hard to talk about really because there's not much else out there that's really like it. Yeah. I mean, you're probably used to hearing that a lot, right? You get. Well, no. Well, I watched I the mean, trailer for it. Yeah. I, that's what I thought. I thought I've never seen anything like this the, before. The trailer is very. The trailer is sort of almost like a tone piece. It, mm, it doesn't yeah. really show much of, of what's in the actual game, except obviously like the first person climbing and that sort of stuff, which is in there. Uh, it's a mystery game. It's a first person mystery game set mm. in the Wyoming wilderness. And the best way I would think to describe it is that it's sort of like. Bioshock or, or Metroid Prime, which is without the combat. It's more focused on storytelling, uh, focused on like building a relationship with another human being that you have on the end of this radio that you can use at any point to talk about things in the environment. So, like, so this is a female character, and she's stationed at another she's watch. She's your tower? supervisor. Yeah, she's, she's supervisor. She's your boss. Okay. So, um, imagine like, imagine Bioshock, where Atlas wasn't just uh, a non-interactive voice on the end of a radio. Imagine mm-hmm. if you could talk back and change your relationship with them, change how you feel about that character and how that character feels about you by having dialogue trees in the middle of the world while you're doing other things. So it's it's very much a sort of dialogue tree driven game, but you don't you never stop the you, gameplay you to, see it, yeah. to do that. You don't get this sort of static moment where you choose. It's just very interactive. Very so how does that function? So say you're exploring the wilderness, you yeah. can call them up at any like yeah, certain so points. You, and- you see a particularly interesting thing, like uh, you find something, you find a, a book in the middle of nowhere, you can talk about it. So you you could be walking and she could just call you up to have a conversation or you look at a particularly beautiful vista that you see and you can go, oh, like check out this place. And she goes, oh, I know where you are. You must be here. And it's and all of those things. But it's not, she'll remember everything that, that you say and uh, to her and you will like build a relationship mm-hmm. with her based on based on uh, your past conversations. So how did you get involved with it originally? Oh, were right. you approached or were you, is this? Well, I was always friends, I was always friends with um, Jake and Sean. Well, actually specifically just Jake um, because God, ages ago when he was working on um, Sam and Max at Telltale, uh, I think I tweeted, I think I said, oh, I really like this game. Everyone should play it if you're a fan of like old school adventure games. And I think he followed me because he liked my work. He's a yeah. really, he's a graphic designer as well. He's really um, into that stuff. And he just, we just got in contact and he was a really good guy to talk to because he'd give me amazing like critiques on stuff I was working on. Like he wouldn't just blow smoke up my ass and say, oh, it's really good. Yeah. I'd say, he's like, mm, maybe you should change this, yeah. this, and this, and this. So those people are like really useful to, <laughs> to have on the old contact list. So I just stayed in contact with him for ages and then eventually they said oh we're thinking about leaving Telltale would you be interested in working on a game and I was like yeah okay let's give it a shot so I met up with them um, 
shortly after they left and we talked about it and it seemed like we all wanted to make a similar sort of thing. So I just took the opportunity and here I am. And what have your responsibilities on the game been? Uh, I'm guessing it's mainly well, designed... Well, mostly, mostly art direction. Yeah. Um, so I'll do concept art and I'll send it over to Jane and Jane will do an amazing, incredible job of making it look exactly how I wanted it to or usually better. So yes, yes, like that, that's good. But it's all, it's all her. She's, she's amazing. Um, but also the thing that I'm most surprised is, about is how much input I'm having in other areas that I wasn't expecting to. Like I was on really, really early at the start. It was just me, Sean, Jake and Nell. So, so a lot of the story beats, a lot of the actual narrative and some of the gameplay design and stuff that I've had um, like input into, which is really fun. That's the most fun part for me because the other stuff is just stuff I've done before. But yeah, like yeah. Learning new things is like so invigorating. It's really nice to wake up every morning and work on something that I'm the least experienced and most stupid person in the room at all <laughs> times. So just having other people saying, oh, no, no, do it like this. This is what you should be doing and is great. So when you're submitting designs for the game, concepts and so on, are you mm. working in the same way that you've always worked? Or are you adapting it to work in a well, new medium? Uh, well, I've never really um, I've never really done like concept art before. So it's yeah. totally new for me in that respect, just like painting a forest. It's not like about designing like a typographical yeah. piece. You're, you're communicating totally different things. You're not you're communicating like a gameplay experience rather than like uh, advertising a film or something. So yeah, it, it is totally different. It's like I have to design, like draw an area, but also think about like, how is the player gonna, what, from what angle are they gonna approach this to get like the best shot? Are we gonna give them like the choice to enter an environment from like three or four different um, angles and is, it's got to look great and yeah. interesting and communicate what they need to do from each of those. So it's actually like a totally new and amazing challenge. Like I really, really enjoy it. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm interested because uh, the first time I met you was actually we got talking about your love of games and that's how mm. you end up coming on the podcast because I think you listened to the podcast before mm. we met. And so you were someone that was designing posters and artwork but really loved games. And now, and I'm sure a lot of our listeners really love games but don't work in the industry. So what's the reality of making <laughs> a game like compared to kind the of reality, what you God. Well, the first imagined? Thing, the first thing that uh, Jake told me when I first met him, he said like, just to sort of cast off any aspirations that I had, was that games are terrible when you're making them. They're terrible and they're awful and they're rubbish until like the last month. It all com it comes or, together. And then it all comes together and you can mm. see. I mean, there's the, like, yeah. Game, and Sean put it in a really nice way. He said that games don't want to be made. Every time you change something or move something that you think is going to be great, it breaks five other things in the game. So it's, it's a weird uphill battle of implementing cool new things that are going to be really exciting with then like figuring out what the actual reality of that breaking everything else is. It's tough. It's like nitty gritty. There's a lot of like tweaking and noodling around and figuring out the best way to to do something that in any other medium would be really easy to do. So it, it's it's weird, but it's also when you get everything working, when everything comes together, when you've been working with eight, ten other, like other talented people who are all really good at their thing, and the vision like all coheres into one single like product it's amazing it's like really 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 fun that's the best part of it and what was it like when you put the trailer out there for the first time because I'm, I'm sure you're checking all the feedback and looking at comments and things yeah like, yeah yeah what was it what was it like putting your baby out there in the world it was a relief because we've been working on it we sort of we put out that we were working on it we put out some artwork and there was sort of like because of who Sean and Jake and the other people on the team are there was like some immediate interest we're not which is actually really nice like as um as an indie studio to have like a bit of um like clout, I suppose, behind mm. from certain people. Yeah, they they and because they've got their own successful podcast with Idle Thumbs, we had like a sort of inbuilt hand base. So there was a sort of anticipation for like, what is this game actually going to be? So it's nice to get that stuff out there and have people respond in a positive way. Because when you're working in a vacuum and it's taking up all your life and you're having a really good time, it's great, but you don't know if people are actually going to like it or not. Mm. So, I mean, we th we thought we were working on something good. Uh, we still think we're working on something good. It's just nice for people to see it and to read the positive feedback and like realize that maybe we're possibly onto something. Right? Because I mean, the main thing for us is that we got a lot of coverage in places where we weren't expecting to get coverage. Like we got picked up in like Time Magazine and uh, Entertainment Weekly, which shows that like maybe hmm. uh, a a combat through, yeah. light, uh, sort of no combat yeah. exploration, like relationship puzzle adventure game is. Hmm what 
people maybe sort of like other people want mm, or maybe, the, maybe what the mainstream interest, wants yeah. maybe what the mainstream wants exactly because mm. uh, so many of these titles just kind of disappear under this like it, it, because they're so niche but it feels like maybe something the mainstream is ready for something a bit more I mean obviously like Gone Home winning so many Game of the Year yeah. awards is uh, it's like a good indicator that I think like the, the, the va- Vanishing of Ethan Carter is getting great reviews at the moment yeah 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 that's, that game seems really cool I played the first 10 I haven't minutes. played it at all yet <laughs> I play games very differently now since I've been making this game I played that game and I immediately Were ran to the nearest the tree and was like looking at it really close. Like, <laughs> God, this game is gorgeous. How did they do this? How did they do this? I need to like you have my steal opium. these ideas. Yeah. And the game was constantly like, no, 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 look at this clue. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm going to go look at this grass over here and see how, <laughs> and see how they made that work. So what's going to happen to the poster work and the, you know, the design work? I'm still doing that on the side. Obviously mm-hmm. not. Obviously I don't have as much time mm. for that. But there's much less time sitting on my ass like playing video games pretending I'm working now now it's like an honest 9 to 5 mostly right. it's not my first, I came here today it's not my first day off it's like, oh, really? Really? Yeah. <laughs> it's really it's really so, nice have so you not seen human beings for a while I haven't, <laughs> my, I haven't been left out of my house it's, <laughs> just sort of oh we put you into a darkened studio are, yeah. are, the, are you working long hours no I mean I'm work, like, it, it depends on yeah. on what the deadlines are mm. like usually I try to keep a fairly decent like I get up at 8 at my desk at 8.30 work until six or seven um and then obviously because of like the time difference because the studio is in san francisco so usually mm. i'm i'm sort of around and like maybe i'll chat to a call in the evening but yeah it's mostly mostly try and keep it fairly mm. fairly business n- normal yeah. like, otherwise i just go insane and i think the work i think the work would like suffer massively yeah like uh, a lot of the people on the team are talking about i mean obviously i'm a game dev baby and i don't know anything but they're talking about crunch and how crunch is, is a usual yeah. response to deadlines but actually it's mostly counterintuitive because people are stressed and keep putting in bad work that, yeah. that breaks everything else and leads to more crunch Problems, time yeah, yeah so. as, as art director would you be affected by crunch in um, the same way yeah because we'll always be finding things like oh crap like we need <laughs> we need this texture now because like there's so many things like at the moment we're just placeholder textures everywhere yeah, right okay. and then i know that some of those will ship in the game because we'll we've because it's we'll yeah, yeah. yeah. like, like, like oh it's fine it's fine it's it's that's it's been that way since the start and no one's actually noticed so yeah i'm sure uh and also you know art director but it's a small team i have to wear yeah course, every, I mean, everyone has to wear a lot of hats so roles, yeah. if i'm not directing art i'll be QA. I'll just be playing the so, game over and over again and trying to break it in as many mm. ways as I can. To so, where's the game at currently? Um, the game is currently. What, what, how do you mean? In terms of percentage complete and like. Oh, it's tough the, to say. I mean, like, uh, we are on track. We're actually kind of a little bit ahead of schedule. We have the sort of the first environment really built out and almost polished to the point where you, we could get anyone in off the street to, to play it now, which cool. is a really good position to be in. Um, we'll wait for that invite. Wait for that invite, of course. But uh, with games, it's a little different from, like, say, writing a novel or a book because once all of those systems are in place, once you've built like, one area, you then start like extrapolating that outward because you can just build the content much, much quicker once you have a pipeline Basis. and all the systems in place to then go ahead and like make the rest of the game. So yeah, we're on we're on target at the moment. It's actually looking good. I think it might be good. I think it's going to be good. And it, it, <laughs> actually, I was under explicit. I was under explicit instructions not to hype it up. So, okay, so that's not hype. Okay, we'll, cut, we'll cut that it's out. Definitely not just hype games. Just not hype. Um, so, do we have any idea when it's going to come out, or is it? Uh, well, is we're saying twenty fifteen at the moment. So right. that's that's all I can say. On Fair enough. Note. And is there any truth to the rumours that your namesake Oli Mers will be doing the soundtrack? Uh, he might he might be cameoing. <laughs> so, lead voice actor. So lead voice actor. Oh, that'd be brilliant. Oli Mers mode. You, just... you should put like a little Oli Mers hat somewhere in the forest. Oh yes, like a little fedora. Like, like, like he's been buried. He's been eaten by a bear, and you just find like you a find mold. This, you find this carcass with like some slightly turned up trousers and uh, uh, a, a mold port by hat. Shirt. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's great. That's great. Speaking idea. of shirts, did you not get the uh, memo about green and navy? Tops. No, I got the memo about wearing my it's Babadook same, no. t-shirt. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> we probably wear a Babadook t-shirt this week, so everyone, there's a Babadook t-shirt. It's one of my, our favourite films the last month or so. I saw a uh, poster for it on the tube on the way over, and I thought it, was, it looked like it had a lot of five stars on that poster. Yeah, yeah it's, it's most... really good. It's really interesting. Like they're marketing it as a monster movie. Like the Babadook's going to come into your house and. But it's much but more. It's not really. A, it's is not, it a sweet horror film. Uh, it, um, well, it's no? not a sweet horror film. It's, okay. um, it's a psychological horror film. It's, it reminded me of um, like the haunting or the innocence or the RKO movies and stuff okay. like that. It's uh, much more about ambiguity mm. and 
psychological states than it is like this thing's going to come out of your wardrobe oh wow um, okay cool it's a big that it's a metaphor mm. oh my god i'm filmed it's with a horror metaphor. film that's that so is a clever. metaphor that's so clever <laughs> uh well we segued away from your game a little Good. bit i don't <laughs> want to talk about it anymore but, um, <laughs> well will you promise to come back and talk to us some more near near release yeah because we want to we want to hear more well hopefully we had a show you some happy to show you that would be saying. awesome yeah that would be awesome Cool, right, let's uh, go on to the okay. uh, feedback. We've got some good feedback this week. Ooh, Should we start yeah. off with so, Daniel? Yeah, uh, just to frame this, so last week we had a big discussion about um, Netflix. Netflix announced that they were doing Crouch and Tiger, Hidden Dragon 2, and we were talking about... Really? Yeah, they're going to... Yeah, it's going to release they, on Netflix the same day it releases in cinema. And they're, fun, okay, they're funding it. And they also announced that Adam Sandler is doing his next four films in conjunction with Netflix. Yep. So we discussed about how Netflix is changing the face of cinema and how mm. films are produced. Mm -hmm. So Daniel Tribe wrote in and he said, you talked about being able to watch films at home rather than going to the cinema. Well, right now on Sky Store, you can rent Draft Day by Kevin Costner for nine ninety nine without leaving your sofa. If there was a film that you actually wanted to see, assuming you don't care about Draft Day, would you rather pay nine ninety nine? or see it in your local cinema for probably a comparable price. Personally, I'd probably stay at home for smaller films, but go for films on the, sorry, go to the cinema for films of the scale of Gravity of the Avengers. I always like, I always feel a bit, uh, like that's that's my usual reaction. It's like, I wanna see a big movie in the cinema, or I wanna see small movies at home. And usually when I like, actually go to the cinema, my experience is completely the opposite way around. Like I, I almost missed out on Boyhood because I thought, Ah, oh, it's alright. I'll just go and That's, you can catch it on Blu-ray. I'll just catch it on Blu-ray, and I'm so glad that I went to cinema mm. to to see that. Interesting. Whereas so many films I go yeah. and I'm just like assaulted by a loud, stupid. Well, film. that's the thing. I like think for, uh, I almost think yeah, that mentality. You can wait for yeah. it at home. Almost the implication there is, ah, uh, it's less cinematic when yeah. those films are the mm. most cinematic of films. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And it's the blockbusters that are just kind of noisy and trashy and. Yeah. and yeah, that's interesting because something something like Gone Girl, I'm a bit on the fence. Like, I feel like I should see a Fincher film in the cinema. Yeah, I yeah. definitely. But equally, it feels like oh, a thriller. I could watch that at home. Uh, Draft Day is one I actually saw Draft Day on a, on a plane. I quite liked it because I like my sports movie. That's mm. one I probably would spend nine ninety nine to watch at home. I but, just got a projector at home, so I can ooh. split the difference. <laughs> <laughs> but it's seeing it with an audience as well, I guess, as well, isn't it? Like that's part of the reason sometimes mm. you go like to have a collective experience. Yeah, oh, and, and sometimes one of the reasons why you would stay away. Mm. Like, yeah. <laughs> comedy, like uh, seeing a good comedy in the theatre is, is brilliant. Because mm. I, I, I'm very much of that case. Like I can watch a comedy or a sitcom at home, and I won't laugh, even though I do find it funny. Mm. But with other people, there's the communal kind of whatever you yeah, want to call yeah. electricity, whatever, where you like start laughing because other people are laughing and it feels okay yeah. to laugh. It's weird. Like, there's there's been the odd time where I've had to watch a comedy on my own that I'm having to review, mm. and it's very hard. It's it's very hard because it's harder to laugh when you're by yourself. Yeah. yeah. You so you, you you can become strangely self conscious about it. Um, anyway, I've got uh, another email on the similar subject. This is a bit of a longer one, but I think uh, there's some good points here. It's from Kevin Tarn, who says, Last week you discussed how cinemas need to evolve their thinking in relation to what viewers want. I wholeheartedly agree that if they offered some sort of season pass to a big television show, such as Game of Thrones, the demand would be huge. However, this got me thinking. Oculus Rift has been touted as the next big gaming novelty, but I see the potential being better served in other areas of entertainment. Imagine, if you will, an app that lets you sit inside Selhurst Park, one for you, Tilly Tots. That's my football uh, team. Um, and, but, and, your, uh, and your nickname. <laughs> yeah, I don't <laughs> I think like, maybe explain that. Don't, don't call me Tilly Tots. Um, uh, so the idea is sitting in Selhurst Park live while a game is playing. You can experience the atmosphere of the crowd while having the luxuries of a home broadcast, such as commentary through your headset and replays. Another idea is a cinema app that gives you the impression of watching a huge screen. However, if you're watching a horror movie, you could have events happening inside the virtual cinema and not on the screen. For example, you're watching Nightmare on Elm Street, you hear a noise to your left, you turn and Freddy Krueger is sitting next to you. So that's a cu couple of suggestions that Kevin makes, which I think are yeah. really interesting they've, ideas. They've already got um, a demo, an Oculus Rift cinema demo, where you can just put in a movie file and sit in the theatre and watch it. Like, interesting. You choose your seats. You can choose any seat. In the theatre. <laughs> middle, middle. middle. Um, <laughs> uh, right the, like, pick a really crappy seat for yourself. Yeah. I, I like seeing it from this angle. And uh, <laughs> this, this week, they're, 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 uh, they've got an Oculus Rift Interstellar thing that you can you can view really? some of Interstellar being in the cockpit and things. Like, wow. Our guy did it in New York Comic Con, I think. I wasn't mm. hugely impressed, but it's going to be in London. I think we might be getting yeah. to try it. Um, but the idea of sitting in a football ground, watching mm. a football match live rather than watching on the telly, that's a really interesting idea. Yeah. Will it make you sit in an uncomfortable seat and like <laughs> yeah. have a really loud, obnoxious man next be to you really shouting racial slurs? <laughs> <laughs> it's not the 80s. <laughs> uh, right, do, you, do you have an Oculus Rift, Dolly? I do have an Oculus do you, Rift. What do you think about it in conjunction with games? Uh, I you... think that I played um, 
not Star Citizen, what's the other one? Elite Dangerous mm. 2 on it and immediately bought a joystick and pedals and <laughs> then played it and it blew my mind. I think it's, in, I think it's yeah. absolutely incredible. I have another Oculus Rift story, but I'll save it till we talk about Alien Isolation. Fair enough. Uh -huh. um, so. But yeah, no, that's really interesting. We, we were talking yesterday. We, we, we popped into um, our old colleague Instagram. We were playing Oculus Rift then. We were talking about the horror potential. And mm. I think there really is potential in, yeah. that, in that genre to do things that really oh, yeah. scare the crap Abs out of people. I, know, I also think it's a really good platform for doing kind of attraction experiences and stuff mm. like that just kind of one off where you you know you put it on you play it for 10 minutes and then you take it off and it's kind of a, you, an attraction and so you have one in the office we don't know oh, i should tell me i would have, i would have brought mine but um there's this game called sightline which if you if anyone on here has a dev kit i really recommend checking it out it's a game where you just sit in a chair and you look at things and when you look at something things outside of your view change so it starts off you're on a, you're a desk and you look at a plant and then it says now look at the computer screen to your right now look at the plant the plant's just changed and that it's, escalates yeah. gradually until you're looking to you're in a city street and then you look to your right and you look down and then you're in a box or like there's one wall of the boxes there and then you look up and the other wall is there and you never see any of these things pop in wow. it's always just out of your thing That's and then you look down very fundamental way. and the floor is gone and you're orbiting the earth and it's millions of miles down and it's just const these constant shocks and it's vertigo inducing and mm. insane uh, and I've you, never had anything like it and that sounds it was such a convincing experience to me have you ever had a bad experience it, has it ever made you feel unwell yeah I, mean, I once played it with a hangover there's, yeah I've, and, I've and also they, played it with mine and there was no and there was no reticule and there was no crosshairs yeah. to like orientate me and I felt really mm. ill it depends I feel like games where you're sitting and I, I know people say this again and again and again but games where you're sitting in a chair or a cockpit, with and you're not actually moving your body. Well, there's a locus to... The minute that you use an Xbox controller to move your head or turn around, it's instant bath city. Like, it's... <laughs> it's, it's so That's weird. That's a great name for a game. Yeah, your brain just goes, nope, nope, not having any of this, and then just throw, like... It's weird. There's also news this week that Warner Brothers and DC are teaming up to make a virtual, a virtual version of the Batcave for Oculus, so you can explore the Batcave yeah. at your leisure. Ooh, we're down cool. with that. <laughs> we're down with that. Will it have the big penny? <laughs> and the T-Rex. And the T-Rex, <laughs> yeah. Uh, next piece of feedback I think you've got, Ollie. Okay, which shall I do this one? Yeah. Dear you fine chaps at IGN UK, I recently got a computer and was looking to start a blog that revolves around media and talks about topical issues, reviews, etc. I'm doing this as I would love to have a job in media journalism and believe this would be an adequate stepping stone. Just wondering if you think this would be a good idea and what benefit would have in terms of gaining a foothold in the industry if I did. Love the show and thanks for all the content produced and content yet to come. Long time listener, first time writer from Gabriel Ward, age 14 in Manchester. Wow. What do you think, uh, Chris? I've put that and I think it's a really good idea. Yeah. I think anyone I think interested in getting into games journalism or any kind of journalism or any kind of writing get blogging get writing the tools are there yeah, you don't have to be like given permission like, you get so many yeah. applicants and you get so, a lot of emails at IGN people asking like mm. people being quiet kind of forward yeah. and asking for jobs and they've never written anything and yeah. it's like so puzzling yeah if you want to write just write if you've yeah. got a computer it's all, it's all you need like, and, you, and you will get better as well I've, I still feel like every day I'm better than the day before. Yeah, like exactly. you just improve. So practice, 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 and that's what that's what a blog read will give a lot, you. write a lot, yeah, yeah read a lot. and learn some video skills as well. Yeah. Like learn to shoot stuff. Oh, even start a YouTube your, channel yeah, as well if, if it's on your phone because mm. you know journalism is now becoming yeah. not just writing. It's 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 multimedia. I would say the the other piece of advice that I would give, not as a game journalist or any journalist at all, but I would say like read a lot, but read things that aren't other game reviews. Aren't, aren't like read a lot of journalism, read a lot of like books. Just get your experience mm. far and wide. There, yeah. yeah, cast your net wide. With yeah. Stuff. Oh great! Uh, next Good luck one. with that though. Yes. yes. Good luck. Is that Gab Gabriel? G Gabriel. Um, right, next one is from Carl Barrett. While searching Amazon for the latest Blu-rays, I came across a Tom Cruise film, sci-fi thriller called Live, Die, Repeat. Having never heard of this <laughs> film, I investigated further and discovered it to be a film called The Edge of Tomorrow, which has changed its title to its previous headline for home entertainment release. Edge of Tomorrow was always a rubbish title, but will, ch will change in the name of the film have a negative impact on sales? Uh, I don't think it will have any impact on sales. No, if anything, it might reveal a lack of confidence. It's in baffling, the isn't it? You know, the, it film film is good. the film is good. I've still it's not very, seen it yet. It's a very strange thing to do because they've put so much money into the marketing campaign for a film called Edge of Tomorrow. And it changed, that's all the, gone. And it changed name mid-production as well, didn't it? From it all did. You it need was to... called All You Need Is Kill, uh, which is what the, the Japanese book called, is called yeah. and um I wasn't they, manga, was it? It was they like, said they were never going to call it all you need is kill uh he, they just um the director said they were just trying to come up with another title all the way through production it's sad that edge of tomorrow is the best they could yeah. come up with uh 
even Live Die Repeat's not a very good yeah, name. No, it should just be called Tom Cruise it, Dies on Camera again and again and again and again and again and again and again. Oh, that would And it would have been. Or, or just Tom Cruise. Just Tom Cruise. Just, just Tom, <laughs> Genuinely, Tom Cruise though, that's movie. what people are going to <laughs> yeah. see a Tom Cruise film for. Tom Cruise 37. I, I, I think it's a very strange decision. I mean, he asked if there's been any other examples. I can't think of anywhere the titles change between cinema and, and, and home video. But uh, have Warner Brothers addressed this at all? Have they said anything? Are they, I don't, I'm not. Are they still I Edge of Tomorrow? It, I didn't think it would. Have, it had actually changed. It has it, no. It, it but just, it's kind of like it's just. It's been just, rebranded. They, they did the. Um, they just a did, tiny little. They swapped line the tagline with the. Yeah. yeah. With the. And uh, it's so title. huge. Live, yeah. die, repeat on the box. Yeah. Um, then the second paragraph, you've highlighted this. I think you probably want to address this. Um, also, oh, yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> also, I read Chris's review of the latest episode of Doctor Who, where he stated it was the best Capaldi episode so far. But one day prior to this review. On the podcast, he stated that he had not watched any episodes of this current series. <laughs> if so, how can he say it's Capaldi's best when he's not seen any other episodes? Chris, do you want to explain this? I do want to explain, explain this. yourself, Chris. I do want to explain this. How are you reviewing this. Doctor Who without seeing it? Um, I do want to explain this. I didn't review Doctor Who. Uh, Matt Risley uh, reviews Doctor Who for us every week, but I'm the one that he's a freelancer. But I'm the one that inputs them. And this week, I forgot to change <laughs> the name because when I when I put in an article, it automatically puts my generates my name, and so I need to go in and change it. And this week, for a, a small period of time it's had my name rather than Matt's. So I still haven't seen an episode of Capaldi's Doctor Who. You so I would it. never, I would never, it, I would never judge it in that way. Are so you bringing that was, IGN reviews into disrepute? <laughs> so that was Matt Risley's uh, opinion entirely. And I'm very sorry to have caused such confusion in the Hooniverse. Uh, okay, moving on. That's an ample <laughs> apology. Ample, fulsome apology. All right. I've got uh, an email from um, Hash Yilmaz who says, um, I've been putting off buying a next-gen console for some time for a number of reasons. He lists them. Do you want to know why? Or go on, shall I move on? Give me the reasons. I will feed um, them all. <laughs> but I that. assume no. <laughs> no, go Shoddy first build quality. Of the actual hardware? Or I... Of the hardware. Shoddy first build quality. Shoddy. Uh, it's a bit loaded, isn't no it? Good, <laughs> no good launch titles. Wrong. No, actually, that's true. <laughs> uh, he's put in brackets, perhaps tenuous, perhaps tenuous. Uh, high prices. True. Uh, current gen is still wicked. It's, it's still pretty a good. A lot of stuff is coming out on it still. It's still pretty good. Wicked. Um, and then his final reason is etc. 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 Which is quite, I quite <laughs> like. I can't disagree with that one. Um, well, but I he says, yeah. but, but I am now ready to go. Yeah. In fact, if this gets onto this week's podcast, I will be buying my new console on Saturday. <gasps> so he's going okay. to buy. Um, I've already made my mind up 95% to get the PS4 simply because I don't like what Xbox One has to offer, despite the price gap now. So my question is, which game should I get maximum of two for the first experience with the PS4? Um, he's Ooh. thinking Destiny and uh, Shadows of Mor- Shadow of Mordor. But seems, seems fine. Do we have any other suggestions? I think they're both excellent picks. Yeah. I think they're both excellent. If he hasn't played The Last of Us, The Last of Us uh, and he says, um, Remastered, yeah. Before you say <laughs> it, he says, before you say <laughs> before it, too I, late. <laughs> I already have The Last of Us on PS3, and I'll, although I know the graphics will be better, okay. it's still an amazing game on PS3, and I'm already into it, so don't want to restart. Don't want to restart. Okay. Anything else you can think of a recommend? Oh, um, um, hmm. oh God, I recently did our top 25 PS4 games. I can't That's remember one of them. good question. Let's get that up. Yeah, like um, Destiny's Destiny's really good. If you've got friends that play Destiny, it's really good. If you're playing by yourself, maybe think about another game. Uh Um, I'm trying to think. Like, what actually? Let's get a list up. I was such a. I was such a. Yeah, get the consoles. Now I'm thinking about. I'm like, have I had a good experience on the next gen console? (laughs) Hmm. That's a good question. So our top five currently of our top twenty five PS4 games. Obviously, there's not that many of them, but there's at least twenty five. And Transistor at number five. It's good. Number four, Child of Light. Number three, Diablo Ultimate Evil Edition. Oh, that's really good, actually. Number two, Resogun. And then number one is The Last of Us Remastered. Hmm. Okay. It depends what kind of games you yeah. It's difficult yeah. to say. Like, I, you can't, like... It Mordor sounds like you can't Destiny go wrong with Mordor, yeah, yeah, the Shadows, really Shadows of Mordor is excellent. Um, really, 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 really enjoy Get loads of time out of it. Job done. Okay, next bit of uh, feedback. FIFA 15. Oh, there's a new one. There's a new one. <laughs> oh, they did it. They finally yeah, it brought out well. the sequel. It did sell well. <laughs> <laughs> Ollie, uh, you've got the next bit of feedback, I believe. Oh, this one's quite... This, I like this one, actually. Uh, so, um, you only need to read out the highlighted bit. Okay. And my suggestion is, um, yeah. it's an email from Nuremberg. Yeah, and not... I, I think you should I, read it in an accent. I, I'm not going to no. read it in an accent. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's been not, I, I'm, so, not, I'm not so, going to do that so but listeners can you imagine you this in an highlighted accent. the intro because I really like it like, well 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 <laughs> another mail from Nuremberg <laughs> Sony what are you thinking we hand over all our data pre-order digitally subscribe to PlayStation Plus they know exactly how many copies were shipped to retailer so you should think they do the maths and calculate what kind of server load they can expect but no 
<laughs> Whoops. So many people want to buy our game. Those loyal folks with PlayStation Plus will have to wait until an unknown amount of time. Get the F out of the business if you still don't understand how things work. <laughs> what do you do with all our data? Print it and put it in a stove for heating. <laughs> so this imagine from that Andreas all in a German in accent. Nuremberg. Yeah, that's from uh, Andreas. Another missive from Nuremberg. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's no real question there, so... No, I just on? quite liked I, it. I liked it, yeah. It made me yeah. chuckle. I, that seems fine. Uh, I, did, I played, tried to play, I'm assuming he's talking about Drive Club. Yeah, yeah I, I guess tried so, to, yeah. I tried to play it when it came out and was giving me the server errors and I thought, mm. seems it, odd. Especially but, when that's... Uh, Apparently a cornerstone of the entire experience. Yeah. Uh, yep. It was. Yep. It was. Seemed a bit. Seemed a bit like a misstep. But sort of used to it right, right now. With big you kind of do you expect think, it to a degree, don't is, you? Is it weird that we live in a world where we just don't expect things to work? Is it all like you're happy when they do? I, th- I thought Destiny was going to be one of those ones where it was going to mm. be, but I guess they, I don't, I they wonder had that if covered. That, yeah, you wouldn't buy a Blu-ray and then get home and like, oh, the film doesn't work. Yeah. Although that, that, used to, that has happened to me, where it needed <laughs> like, a patch to the Blu-ray player. That oh, got, right. I, yeah, I suppose so. Oh. What a oh, world oh, we live oh, in. I know, terrible. Oh. Um, friend of the show, Daryl Sharp, writes in, with the upsurge in gaming podcasts, why has there been no return of gaming TV shows? I grew up watching Games Master age 14 to 20 um, no, but now getting on for 36 week th- ah, sorry but now getting on for 36 in a week's time um, there's only the odd dodgy video game show on Challenge TV late at night do you think a reboot of Games Master could succeed or who do you think could take over from Dominic Diamond uh, it's all on YouTube now there's no exactly the point the, it's the, elsewhere the, video the audience games. is being catered for with no risk by people that don't get paid that much except, and, and the people who one, one, yeah. except the 1% the 1% of YouTubers yeah the I people feel who, like yeah. Aren't we? Aren't we doing it right yeah, it's, now? It's, 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 it's online. It's online. It's on YouTube. It's on specialist websites. I would like someone to bring Games Master back, though. Specifically, yeah. Games Master. Who would you? Who would you cast? Who would you replace? Mm. Well, who would be Sir Patrick Moore? Uh, Pete, Pete, Donald- Toby Jones. Pete Donaldson. Pete Donaldson. Toby Jones. Friend of the show, Pete Donaldson. He'd do a great job of it. Oh, I should have thought about this. So someone, you know, they, Pete, I still don't know how to beat Green Hill Zone Act One Three of Sonic the Hedgehog. I need to go back. I don't like Sonic. It has to be a Scottish person. <laughs> what Dexter Fletcher? It has to be a Scottish person. What Dexter Why does Fletcher? It have to be a Equal Scottish opportunities, person? Chris. Because to replace Dominic Diamond, you've got to have a Scottish accent. No, but like, like for like, I'm not, I'm not talking Dustin about Dustin Diamond. Dustin Diamond. That's good. That's actually really. Didn't good. Dexter Fletcher replace him first time around? Dexter Fletcher know. replaced Tommy Diamond on Games Master. I think the, 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 host he wore a pretty, jumpsuit. the host is pretty interchangeable. I think the actual Games Master himself, like who would? Poor. Uh, the, the actual Games Master, Stephen Fry. Yeah, maybe. What Matt about, Lucas. What about? Are we ready? Is Neil society Diamond. ready for a game Neil mistress? Diamond. A game's mistress. Yeah. Well, they had that on the Sky One show. They, ha- I think they, she was called the game's mistress, and I'm sure she was played by Jet from Gladiator. <laughs> what <laughs> is this a fever dream, Chris? <laughs> oh, I really hope this. I've made this up. I really hope I haven't made this up. That's so good. Back in the day, I used to watch all the games programs. It is it is strange. There's not like a mainstream um, TV show. I, I agreed. It, it's being catered for on YouTube. But well, what I would rather have is I'd rather have programs like the Culture Show taking games seriously. I was thinking about this the other day. Mm. And for example, I started reading. I started using the Guardian mm. app, and games is still in the technology section. Where yeah. oh yeah, it, oh, you think about arts and culture? culture. Yeah. yeah, that's. I think that's, that's a, a very strange situation. I, I would like them to start talking about it on like Front Row and the Culture Show. And yeah, these, taking it I as think. seriously as we do. No, I'm good. Diane, that was a funny noise. Uh, Diane, noise. U- Diane Newdale, also yep. aka Jet from the Gladiators, developed her young fan base, becoming a children's television presenter as the game's mistress. Doesn't sound very child friendly. Well, well, the game's oh, mistress sounds like someone who might like take girls out for netball at lunchtime. Or yeah, Do you know what, on the video games. Sure so like interesting rubber. story. Uh, my ex-girlfriend, um, Jet, was her PA, PE teacher. Uh, on the video game show Games World. Well, it's hard, guys. I was entirely right. So yeah, okay. <laughs> it was, it was Jeff on, glad you yeah. played the games. <laughs> it was on Sky One each weekday from 1993 to 1998. I think David Williams was in it as well. Or um, he was. David <laughs> Williams. It was hosted by Bob Mills. Bob Mills. <laughs> That's, a, that's an early 90s name. <laughs> you don't even wish Bob Mills anymore. Right. Okay. Um, I have an email. Um, now, it's from James, um, James Coyu. Uh, he's explained how to pronounce his name, which is useful. He says, Duck Hunt, hi guys. I read this email, I scanned it, and then I highlighted it because I didn't understand it. And I thought, I'll try and understand it in the podcast when I read it out. Mm-hmm. So pay attention. Last week, uh, Ollie, to give you some context, we discussed what the difference between a series and a season was okay. on TV. Yep. Um, and James says, The big in, questions. Big question. Yep. In North America, at least to me, being Canadian, a series is a bunch of seasons put together. 
i.e. Star Trek The Next Generation is a series, but there are seven or so seasons within the series. So a season is literally each New Year's release of any given numbered episodes that belong to a series. The same can be said for Game of Thrones. It's a series that has, so far, four seasons. Or Doctor Who is a series with however many seasons that are released. I'm assuming the number of season sets that make up the entire DVD collection or the number of Doctors, but this can be tricky due to multiple seasons for some of the Doctors. (laughs) Uh, Confusing to say the least. He lost me. I I got lost about halfway through. Why why is this so difficult to understand? (laughs) But is this correct then? Yeah, it's it's a series in America is is what we would call a program. Mm -hmm. And we would call a season a series. I didn't make that easy, did I? I, just, I, think, I, just you've, I think, if anything, you've introduced a new element. Well, you, like, you introduced a new term, program. Program, yeah. <laughs> just throw oh, another no. word into the mix. <laughs> well, no, that, like, it's interchangeable. I, I so series and season and program and uh, series, I think, is the is the way it works. God, now I'm confused. I came on this program <laughs> absolutely rock solid, sure, well, about what they meant. And now you've... you've the IGN you UK myself. podcast, not afraid to ask the big questions. No. On a weekly um, basis. On gate. a weekly basis. Like- well, thanks for that, James. I think. Yeah. But okay, it's not been. You know the terribly news. Helpful. Found a clip of the games mistress. Don't look that kid friendly. I told you she wore rubber. I said <laughs> God, that. She so, she, so she's like the games. Domi- she's more of a dominatrix. Why do you think I watched person? it? She sat on a sofa for people who listen to the podcast. That's yeah. pretty much most people. And people uh, watch it can't see this because you 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 it's not. It's not <laughs> yeah. suitable. Does uh, she give you tips on how to like beat Balrog in Street Fighter or so? Like, what does she? What she's, does she? Yeah, she's in do? a PVC dress and sat on a sofa that looks like a set of red lips. Yeah. It's a far cry from Patrick Moore. Can we move on? Uh, to Far Cry in, a, in an amazing segue. No. Uh, Ollie, <laughs> we, we're nearly there. We're, okay. nearly there. we're nearly there. Don't worry. Sorry. Okay. Uh, I, so um, Chris Cook writes, I'm going to be attempting to break the Guinness World Record for the longest game session on a football, in brackets, soccer, uh, video oh. game, brackets, FIFA 15, in order to raise money awareness for the awesome charity Special Effect. Um, Which we're big supporters of here. We yep. love Special Effect. Uh, if anyone wants to get involved or just wants more information on the event and how they can come along and beat me at FIFA, then drop me a line via Twitter. His Twitter handle is at XIX Blue Wolf XIX. Cool. So good so, luck with that, Chris. Yeah, good luck, Chris. And yeah, drop him a line if you want to get involved. Okay. Um, serious email to mm. finish the show. This is from Harry Rea. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Um, What are your thoughts on the expectations of gamers when it comes to reviews of popular and hyped games by IGN and other publications? It seems that IGN is catching a lot of flack lately for giving certain hyped games less than perfect reviews, and this seems to upset a lot of people. Do you think there is a growing expectation of gaming publications to score heavily marketed games highly and not discuss their shortcomings? Can a disapproving review be interpreted as an attack on people's feelings like excitement and hyped expectations for a game that leads to them attacking the comment sections of said review with insults towards the reviewer or accusing the publication of being paid off to swing its opinion one way or the other. In my opinion, I thought that IGN taking its time to do a week-long review of Destiny with regular video features and commentary throughout was a great idea that pulled together a lot of the staff's opinions. This was a far more effective way to review a heavily hyped and marketed title than a single person's experience. Mm. So obviously, the elephant in the room a lot of this email refers to our review of Alien Isolation. Ryan's review is obviously live on site. Mm -hmm. They followed it up a couple of days ago. They did a video discussion piece with Ryan, the reviewer, and a few other editors Mm -hmm. to discuss how they came to that review and how he came to that score, which is 5.9. And so that's, but that's what Harry's um, email is in reference to, if you didn't know. So which points do you want to address? What do you think, Ollie? Do you think people take it as a personal attack when the game that they've been excited for for like nine months yeah. obviously the preview process you know you, mm. we do we do preview games negatively we did a negative preview of Evil Within yeah. I previewed Alien Isolation and I should say before getting into the conversation I haven't finished the whole game I've played about four hours right. um, but in my very first preview that we ever wrote on Alien Isolation in January this mm. year I said that it's a great experience because I played mm. an hour long like snippet of the game mm. where well, you're hunted by the alien and that's brilliant it's, and, it works yeah. so well and I said in the preview I'm not sure how this scales to a, to a, f- a 10 hour and game who knew it was going to be a 20 hour game a 15 game 20 or, hour yeah. game but I still alien aside let's talk about the issue at hand okay, which right. is kind of expectation and people taking reviews sure. quite personally mm. it's, it's a weird one I feel like people especially with video games more than any other media they like wrap up a lot of their identity in the games that they're playing because you put so much time into them right and 
you get to the point where you're hyped up about a certain game coming out and you think, right, this is going to be me for the next week. I'm going to put 15 hours into this game. It looks great. It's got everything that I want out of a game. But you still haven't played it. And when someone comes along and gives it a less than positive review, I feel like some people feel like put the amount of like their own identity that they've like injected into this thing is like being attacked. It feels like a person. It's like when people attack Call of Duty. If you if you're a big Call of Duty player and you've like put a lot of time into like getting your kill death ratio right and getting your like and and being you know getting up those rankings and someone says, well, I think Call of Duty is a stupid game. It feels like so someone's attacking yeah. you for for wanting to have. More so than any other media, I think. Like, if you read a book or you listen to a CD, it's not like gonna affect your your life in like a, in, in a way that maybe like a playing five hundred hours yeah. of a thing I, I, is. Mm, so, but, but sometimes people put uh, there is a comparison. I think like sometimes people put like One Direction fans or something. Someone yeah. that really loves an artist and puts so much of their life into finding the artist. Yeah, or, exactly. And I think or, that's, or it happens sometimes a little bit. I found with the, with the film yeah. reviews, it's because people mm. love Batman so much. Yeah. That if the Dark Knight Rises doesn't quite live up to the Dark Knight, then yeah. almost we, 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 we're, yeah. we're, we're held responsible when we review that's, it. That's totally that's totally true. But I feel like with video games, especially, you do and you you're so engaged with the thing that you're playing. I think it, yeah. that that sort of attachment tends to happen uh, more. Yeah, and um, I think there's more opportunities yeah. for a person to become attached and invested in mm. a game before it comes out more yeah. than a movie because you can pre-order the game, yeah. you can buy the special edition can, of the game, yeah. you play an alpha, you can play a beta, yeah. you can start a character, and, and you've got like so, you're already yeah. like committed to this. Not thing. only are you emotionally invested, you're, you're possibly fina- also financially, financially invested, invested as big well. Time. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember like I was going on, uh, I was looking at the Evil Within thread on the NeoGaf, a popular gaming yeah. forum. Other forums are available, <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> I was looking at this thread and the game isn't out yet. There haven't been any reviews as far as I can tell. None of the people in the thread have posted it, but they're already getting their evil within avatars ready because they're so, they're so they know this game. They know it, and the, that this and game is going to be, is going to be mm. great. And if someone comes along and gives a bad review, it, it feels bad. But I think what gamers can expect and I think from, a, from IGN is like just a, just a personal response to a game. That's and all that's all a expect. review can ever mm, be. Yeah. And this is, you know, Dan Stapleton has been quite vocal about this on Twitter this week. He's our reviews editor. And, you know, nobody's saying you can't buy that game, enjoy that game, mm. like that game. It'd be your favourite game of the year. Yeah. And a review is only ever a formalised version of a single person's experience. Yeah. Mm. And come back and feel, you know, come back and do yeah. constructively yeah. comment and say, well, I disagree with this and mm. I like that. Like, I find that really interesting in, in my reviews yeah. sometimes. One of the it's very emotive when it's just come out as well, or mm. it's just coming out. Sometimes when the dust has settled a, a year on, yeah. Yeah. Pe- people's your opi- opinions change, and mm. like with the Dark Knight, I think a lot more people are kind of in agreement with our thoughts that it wasn't as good as the Dark Knight. Yeah, yeah. Before it, but it, sometimes it just takes time to. The dust has to settle. Mm. Um, it does seem interesting with uh, talking about alien isolation in um, particular. That mm. a lot of U.S. reviewers have kind of tended to go lower with scores than British reviewers. And it's a British game. Yeah. And Conspiracy! Or no, whether, I just think it's... Yeah, or yeah, like... I just think or it, whether that's a, a false correlation. I also think... A false pattern, maybe. Yeah, I also think that um, a lot of the UK reviews tend to be, tend to be like PC reviews. Yeah. And they tend to... Like that type of gamer tends to enjoy more like long, Those, stealthy, yeah. hard experiences. Yeah. Um, that's just a... Stupid theory, but so the, you and I have both been playing it. Oh, sorry, you going to? Sorry, well, something? I was just going to say the other the other point is that like the, what people expect from reviews depends on the. It's so it's such a weird thing now because video game reviews are like half way between like a review of a novel or a film or like a review of a lawnmower. You know, it's like, does it work? How long is it? That's the, the, yeah, and it and, depends and, on the style of game. Yeah, and this this is one of those games where one of the biggest criticisms that I've seen laid against it is that it's too long, and for some people reading that. It's too long. It just seems like a stupid criticism. Yeah. I'm getting so, twice as much yeah, game so, so for people my definitely 60 see, pounds. Or, video games are expensive. Yeah. To people, a lot of people do. And there's mm. a, there is a kind of an old strain of video game journalism mm. where a review is like, is is this a good value for money proposition? Yeah. Mm. And with some games, some games that is a totally fair like point to make. For example, mm-hmm. if you if you love Disgaea, for example, if you fucking love that game and you just want content you like you know the systems are there you just want to level all your characters up to 99 like the fact that that game is like a sort of portable game or something like that mm. and you're going to get so much yeah. value out of it that's great and that's a totally fine thing to make but when the game is like so intense and um God, what's the word Stress- it is stressful. stressful. It is a stressful and, game to play. And it keeps repeating the same tri- tricks over and over. I, again I haven't played enough to actually but the, the criticism I've heard is that it's great but 
the scares where it like turn into just tedium really really quickly and there's and that drags out for for 20 hours so I, that is a totally valid criticism to make in in this case i think but mm. again it just i think part of the outcry is just what people expect from a game review which is i think they're moving more towards a kind of personal response and less yeah. in that vein of like graphics gameplay yeah. longevity you know, all these mm. giving it a score and then averaging it is yeah is, and i think we, yeah or to bring this to a close i think it's it's more that you know a review is just a person's opinion like, and someone who mm. reviews games and films for the site you know when you, you know when you're going to put a score out there that's probably going to ruffle some get, feathers and yeah. it's not you know it would never change my mind uh, but it, you know don't attack people like it's really horrible yeah. that you're just doing your job and then you wake up on Saturday morning and in on your Twitter feed you've got loads of people just abusing you it's yeah. just like well what why if why I'm doing this like I'm yeah, not exactly. stopping you from doing or enjoying this game at all so I think you know mm. It's like this. It's like the sneery person goes, "Oh, I can't believe you listen to this band," and you just feel yeah. like crap. Like yeah. When someone, yeah. When and someone says that, but down. really, it doesn't matter. Like, yeah, it really doesn't matter if you enjoy you them. Yeah. Enjoy what what you like. yeah. Talk, like, do you want to actually talk about the game? Yeah. Well, we're going to go on to games out this week, Ooh, okay. and there's lots of games out this week. We're Good. really in the busy end of the year. So, first one is Alien Isolation. We've talked about it just in reference to that question, but. Um, do you want to tell your Oculus story? Or do you want to talk about oh, the yeah, game no, in general just, a little bit? I just really like the Oculus story because it starts in such a hilarious way. We were at a wine and cheese mixer at Oculus headquarters. Classic, <laughs> classic, moss. classic moss. Classic moss. Classic moss. Were you wearing tweed? Uh, I wasn't this time. No, <laughs> it was, it was sad. Um, but we, they, they had just, uh, they'd opened a new office in San Francisco and they invited some game developers to go and sort of meet them and try out a few things. And I tried out um, Alien Isolation on the Oculus Rift and it scared the crap out of me. <laughs> That's it, like too intense an experience. It was quite intense as I it is. I like yeah. instantly, um, but it was fantastic. It, like, And I th- wanted the actual game to ship with that support, but it, it hasn't. Uh, but yeah, I think that I think twenty hours of that might just be, You'll die. Yeah, it might just yeah, I will actually die, die in the real world. Well, it's like Nightmare yeah, on Elm Street. If you, <laughs> <laughs> you die in Oculus Rift, you die in the real world. Yeah, that exactly. must be so. Uh, one of the kind of um, death, death animations is the alien's tail piercing through your chest. God, so if you look down, the, is that, that was the one. That was the one that happened to me because I saw the alien. I was like, crap, I'm going to run. So I started sprinting. And, and then suddenly that, the terrifying. animation of like sprinting stopped, and I was like, what happened? And I looked down, and it's like sticking out of me. You didn't have like the canned look down expression. That was oh That's, god. Also, just like the ability of um, Oculus Rift to put like a six foot two bloke into the body of this like um, small diminutive well, yeah. uh, like female main character was like a really amazing, it was, like a really amazing experience. And again, I think Oculus has the the potential to like do that transform, people, perception, transform your yeah, perception. Yeah. So, like, there's a lot of like head like, ducking under things. Yeah. Like, everything feels like it's like, and there's lots of that as well. Like, yeah, lots if, of, sorry, lots of that. That's good for um, people yeah. listening to the podcast. But with DK2, mm. you've got the tilting. Yeah. So, there's a lot of leaning around corners mm. in alien isolation and, you, and you, peering over boxes. You and, physically have to, in your chair, move around and duck down. And that's how the look works. So, um, it's what, great. Um, doing art direction on um, one game. Yes. One of the things that Alien Isolation has almost received universal praise for is yeah. its art direction. Yeah, it makes do you me think? feel like a hack. <laughs> it makes yeah. me feel like an idiot. It is amazing. It's amazing. It's just yeah. outstanding, isn't God, it? God, I love the word, especially the, um, this is, uh, sounds like a stupid thing to say that I loved the most, but um, the opening like crawl of the uh, 20th century yes. Fox logo and the creative, except ruined on PC because you get those two amazing like old school uh, 70s style video treatments and then you get the better with amd like super oh, slick that's a bit. piece of crap like so um but the, they've nailed that look, nailed the look, the look yeah. and the sound design as well the sound design in that game is absolutely incredible it's just i get sidetracked and i just keep taking pictures of everything yeah it's really bad it's, it distracts me i keep pressing the share button it on is. everything and just because yeah. it looks beautiful it's like you're walking around mm. probably my favorite film of all time yeah and a world based on that you, yeah that's how I play every game now I just stop and look at the art direction and be like oh god this is so yeah. good ah, I keep looking scary. at all the magazines and the posters and just yeah, yeah it's, it's all it's, it's all really amazing good. Yeah. Yeah, it's, except they do the the one thing that I was sort of disappointed with is that they just do the classic like you oh the space station's a bit like a bit fucked up what's happened here and then it's like there's writing on the walls they've just got the classic yeah Bioshock like writing everywhere it's like how long and apparently it's only been like in a bad state for two days like, yeah it's really, it's really got to high water also yeah I want yeah. to actually know what the time what the actual time is that people start like writing there's no hope turn back on the on the walls like <laughs> instantly in every post apocalyptic like <laughs> setting like what, that's what a good point? and who's the guy that's nominated yeah. to do that yeah. Yeah. Do, you yeah. 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 do you want to take her yeah, yeah I've got can, some pain yeah. now some pain I haven't used it when I did the art Store. Sorry, you're doing your own blood this time. Yeah, sorry. Really? Oh no! no I've got that. I've Shucks. got a paint I used on the skirting board last yeah. year. Yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> um, 
So I really like the androids as well. The kind of I budget and Android, yeah. androids. Yeah. So yeah. they're um, a long way from so best Bishop. game of the year. Um, no. it's a, it's but I do really like it and I feel yeah. like it's maybe a game that's more to my taste than Ryan but again mm. I I need to play the whole thing before we'll be able to comment I absolutely love what I've played of it so far but I've only played yeah, me the too. first couple of hours and I, I can see how that might scale badly yeah. over a long experience but it, I think it's fantastic so another game out this week one that's been in production for a long long time delayed finally out is the PlayStation 4 exclusive racing game Drive Club Drive Club now which is is our servers up and well by the time you listen to this hopefully they will be up hopefully, and running yeah. yes. I didn't check this morning um, you've played it briefly I played you, it briefly I really like the the graphics are nice yeah nice I graphics. think in our review um Luke, one of our racing experts, reviewed it. So mm. He thinks it's probably the best looking racing game he's played on console. Yeah, definitely. And uh, actually, I think the first time I was on the podcast, we talked about Drive Club. Wow. Uh, probably, yeah. Full circle. Wow. Okay. Years ago. Well, it was two um, hours a year ago. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So the weird. The, I actually really like the handling. I think the game feels great, but I'm not mm. a big like racing guy, so anything I say will probably be stupid and idiotic at this point. But I, I like well, it. Welcome to the team. The, the problem with the game is that it just feels like there's not enough stuff in it, and it, it's a bit soulless. And maybe this is just coming off playing Forza Horizon 2. Which, which is so much fun. Which is it? just fun. It's so fun all the time. And Yeah, I... Th- our review said that Forza um, Horizon 2 is like having Forza Motorsport shot out of a t-shirt cannon into your face. Yeah, that's, and it's like really fun, it's joyful, it's, and yeah. it's just, you know, there's personality to mm. it. And, what well, you know, and with Drive Club is, for how beautiful it is, it's actually a very conventional racer beneath mm, the surface. Very, where very it is, it here, here are your circuits, yeah. they're all across the globe. Mm. Here are some cars. I'd love there's to no talk music, about the social no, stuff, yeah. but it just wasn't working yeah. when I was playing it. Oh, and so. that's supposed to be its distinguisher. No, the, there is music. It's just the volume is defaulted to 0%. All oh, right. So you turn but it up and then it, you get like weird drum and bass. Like, tss, tss, so I, like, I, I, I played it for about an hour and I just felt yeah. the opening was quite kind of lukewarm. It yeah. wasn't an impactful opening to a game that you've been waiting for sure. for over a year. What I, what I really like about it is that... Um, the sense of speed they get that really really that even the slow cars feel fast which is a problem that i always had with like gran turismo is that yeah. cars felt really slow and the really and the courses are quite narrow so it's, there's a lot mm. of jostling for places it and feels, it feels quite intense feels, when you're, yeah, yeah aggressive and, and cool and I, I like that a lot but it just feels i just if this is the state that it's in now i wonder what state it was in when it was still going like a year ago when it was supposed to be launched well i think a lot of that's been spent on the visuals Uh, i know people Mm. saw it a year ago and were distinctly underwhelmed by how how it looked which is quite muddy and um evolution studios made some of the best looking games on motor storm yeah was was Storm was a game that had so much personality yeah it was really fun and great and arcadian i guess yeah um but we we still gave it a 7.9 so so it said it's a very good game Um, and luke spent a lot of time with it he's a big racing game fan um skylanders trap team is out do you like Skylanders? Uh, I've never played Skylanders. <laughs> so Skylanders are, are, is reviewed it's, every year by for IGN by Steve Butts, who is our editor in chief. He reviews it every year with his kids. Does he have a like a whole house full of Skylanders? Skylanders probably. Yes, and <laughs> he says it's one of the best in the series. So what it is is I read about this briefly. So the trap team, there's a there's a prison where all the villains have escaped, hmm. and you can basically trap the villains and then use them as playable characters. Hmm. So there's obviously a new range of toys to go with this. But he said it's um, loads of great characters, and the return to the of Skystones make Trap Team one of the best games in the Skyland series. Oh, that's cool. And it's I a mean, man who knows his stuff. People love those games. I actually really want to try one out. Um, I just don't. Yeah, they look really good. They like, look good. I yeah. like the grass. I, I just I just don't have a room in my house I, for lots of plastic tiny toys. And interestingly, um, it's coming out to mobile this year and oh shipping God, no, gonna make it the exact and it's the exact same game and it will cost 60 pounds because you need a special oh you need the, you need a thing. portal you that comes with it yeah and so the portal yeah. comes and your um tablet whether it's android or um an ipad slots into it and it has its own little controller that comes out of the bottom and it's a special control bluetooth controller using bluetooth 4.0 that okay. works with all tablets all new tablets and, it works and on, it's the exact same game and it works on iphone and or is it just tablets well they haven't talked about phones i'm sure it, i'm sure it'll be yeah. coming to phones but that's that really, is like really it's smart. exactly the same game so if kids don't have a, a console a next gen console yeah but they've got like a cheap tablet they yeah. can play the exact same game which is pretty could be quite that's, powerful yeah that's great and quite canny of them um project spark project spark is so like I haven't played Project Spark. I haven't either. I didn't even know it was out. They, I, I, I think they've sent that one out in a weird, quietly, quietly. as well. A quite busy week till they release it. In well, as well, they've bought Minecraft now. They don't need. They don't need that game. Yeah. Anymore. Do you think, <laughs> do you think they've lost interest in Project Spark? They've got. Oh, this was God. kind of our. This was our Minecraft, and now we've got the real <laughs> thing. So, <laughs> it, it, Project Spark always felt weird to me because it was a game that 
its biggest selling point was what you could build and it was like, super like, creative right you, it was a tool set to make whatever you wanted but it also enforced this really like specific art style on uh, the players like it all looked a little bit Tim Burton he had these like twisty trees yeah, yeah. and one of the th- reasons like Minecraft is so successful in that uh, is because the graphics are so like blocky and bad that you just you're forced to use your imagination to fill in the blanks and that is what I think that's one of the reasons like it's, it, been, su- it's been so successful mm. whereas Project Spark I think was trying to capitalise on a similar thing but I, I couldn't see anyone really like latching onto it in the same way. What do you think about the games? The games like a, a Little Big Planet or a Disney Infinity, where there's that element where you can build your own game. I think they're absolutely fantastic. I think that, I mean I I was really into Little Big Planet. I love Minecraft. Um, I think any if, if I could go back in time and tell like twelve year old Ollie, like yeah. eight year old Ollie, you can make your own game. That, hey, there's a game, and you can go in with your friends, and you can make your own stuff, and then you, you can like basically make Lego, and then you can actually be inside it and play around with it with your friends. He would lose his mind. Like, <laughs> I, and and it's it's anything that is a game for kids that they enjoy that gets them creative, like making things, get like and solving creative problems is fantastic laudable yeah, yeah. i think uh, yeah exactly laudable is a really good way of putting it um final game we don't have a review of it on site we'll talk about it next week i think but nba 2k15 which is usually the best and uh, the, the nba game that you want yeah. and uh, this week was quite funny this like face scan face, stuff, face technology scan stuff we ran a gallery insane. of them on site and yeah. people just look like alien orangutans i know they're all like their faces are melting off or that's like, it's, it's amazing i almost uh, bought it probably got more almost publicity on the reason. back of them yeah. being bad mm-hmm. than if they were actually good so yeah. that's it for games actually quite a bumper week um lots to check out and something for everyone on the film side of things uh annabelle didn't you go and see annabelle i didn't in the end you didn't you had a ticket i knew you I knew you had a ticket. So what's, this what's, uh, Annabelle is the prequel to The Conjuring. Did you ever see The Conjuring? I did see The Conjuring. So it's about the doll. <gasps> it's the history behind the doll, the creepy doll. The creepy doll. Uh, it's made an absolute fortune in the States, actually, last week when it came out. We gave it a 6 out of 10 on the site. Oh, no. I've not heard great things from anyone about it. Apparently, there's a good scare at the start, but then even it's just the fo- a little bit... Even the footage in the trailer looks pretty ropey. Yeah. I liked The Conjuring. I liked yeah, The Conjuring. Conjuring was great. Yeah. So... Mm, yeah, not not sure about that one. So, and then uh, two more films coming out this week, The Maze Runner and 71, both of which I've seen. And it's kind of made me think they're both quite similar, actually. They're both about young men who get thrown into situations they don't understand. Giant mazes. Way out of their depth. <laughs> uh, one's a maze, one is Belfast during the Troubles. Okay. And they've got to fight for survival, and the film is kind of following their journey. But <laughs> The Maze Runner is so average. It feels like one of these young adult adaptations, kind of almost painting by numbers, where they're just going through yeah. all the different things. The only thing it doesn't quite have is a romance, but I feel like that's that'll be in the Sequel, second movie, yeah. which, which is already green, the film though. spends the last 10 minutes setting up the second film, and it's just frustrating. Mm. Like, you want to know what's going on. They vaguely tell you at the end, but say, no, you've got to watch this next film, which we haven't even... Okay, this is so happening. are they getting like out of the maze, more. or are they trying to get to the middle of the maze? Uh, they're trying to escape. They're trying to understand what the maze is. Oh, so it's like the cube. <laughs> so it's like oh, yeah, the yeah, cube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not as good as. <laughs> so, so, just, so just watch Cube. <laughs> watch Cube, <laughs> which I've actually got. Which um, likes Sky the same. Plus at the moment. <laughs> which likes the yeah. team romance. Helen. God, for some reason, Cube Two has my favourite film title of all time. <laughs> it's just Cube Two Hypercube, isn't it? I just love it. I don't is know it, why. It just tickles. It just pushes all my buttons. Cube Three is it cubed? Is it really? I don't know. It should be. Should which it? of should them be has cubed, the, like, Which of them has a three like in the place of an E? Because that's the new thing. I'm over taken. That. I'm taken. so over that. Um, so, uh, 71, I mentioned earlier in the podcast, that stars Jack O'Connell as the soldier um, who gets stuck in Belfast. And it's absolutely brilliant. So that's the film you should see this week, yeah. everyone. Even if you think about seeing Maze Runner, don't. Yeah. Go and see 71. And You'll have a much you, better experience. If you don't see that, go see Cube. Go see yeah, Cube. Find, find Cube. Cube, I think it's been on the horror channel lately. It's on Netflix, I think. Is it? I think so. It'll be on mm. one version of it's Netflix. On, it's somewhere. on, it's on Plus. one of Belgian the many Netflix. Yeah, it's on I've one. never seen it. I've got it Sky Plus. I've never watch seen soon. it. No, oh, I've got oh, it Sky oh, Plus man. to watch soon. That's a great film. I tell you, that's your homework for next week. I want you okay. to watch Cube. I will. And, then I want, and I'll write in and you can tell me what you think of it. You write in. Yeah, that's cute. Yeah. Uh, that's a good point, actually, because the address you need to write to, if oh, okay. you do want to give us feedback... I'll put this oh. in my phone. ...is IGN uh, underscore UK feedback at IGN.com. Okay. Um, you know, let us know if you want to chat about any of these things that we talked about, either the review situation, the casting of Dad's Army, um, questions for Ollie and Firewatch, which we could maybe pass on to him. Are there yeah. ideas for or, Ollie Moore's Easter eggs? Oh yeah, I, I will. I will actually accept those and put them in. All of, I put <laughs> all, all of them. them. Yeah. Just, you can't even. Move I played. Them. Yeah, I just. It's going to be Olimar's Olimar's song references. Actually, does he have any songs? I can't remember. What yeah, was, dance I, with me tonight. Dance with me tonight. I like tonight. that song. Okay. Um, we do have an announcement though, don't we? What? What's the announcement? 
uh, about Podcast 250. Oh, Podcast 250, Alex yes. said you know all the details. Did he now? That's what he does. Um, uh, well, in. he expects a lot from me. So um, we have decided we are going to have an event for Podcast 250, mm-hmm. and we're going to be hosting, hosting, uh, hosting a pub quiz. A it, pod, a pod quiz. A pu- if you, I, pub pub quiz. I came to one of these once. If you, you did, didn't if you? you yeah, it was good. And so we're going to have it on the evening of Tuesday, the twenty first of October, in a central lo- London location. Mm-hmm. And shortly, you'll be able to find out how to um, get tickets on the IGN website that uh, we run. But keep that free. Uh, Get we, we need to get that up actually really quick. Yeah, we do. <laughs> so it'll probably uh, be on the s- website by the time this goes live. Have a think about getting a team together to come down. Ollie, if you're free, you should come down and join I'll us. I'll be there. Everyone can I bring. Will be there. Everyone can bring all their Ollie Moss memorabilia. Can I get my? Um, I didn't show <laughs> this. Want, other he just thing. wants to have a pint. He I just, just want to have a pint and answer some trivia. Ollie Moss plate as well. Yeah, plate. Which is going to be? Where is that going to be? Soon? I can't say. Okay, it's oh. going to be on my wall. It's going to be. It's going to be on my wall. I don't know if I can say actually. I should probably, in case it doesn't happen, I should probably not say. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Fine, but it's going to be on my wall. But yeah, that's it. We'll have more details. Maybe in the podcast story, we might be able to. Put yeah, we'll the put it all there. Details. And also ha- vote, vote. I'm not going to read it out again. But vote, 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 vote. vote. So yeah, uh, thanks for listening, and Ollie, thanks for joining us. Thanks, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure ourselves, and good luck with the rest of the game. Thanks. Cool. Thanks for listening and watching, everyone. Bye. <laughs>